गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन प्लीज स्कैन दी क्यू आर कोड एंड डू दी इवेंट चेकिंग दिस विल गिव यू एक्सेस टू अडिशनल रिसोर्सेज एंड इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट इवेंट्स दैट वी आर रनिंग ऑन रिएक्टर विच आर अराउंड सिमिलर टॉपिक्स टू टूडे सेशन ऑल्सो यू विल बी एबल टू एक्सेस लिंक्स फ्रॉम टूडे सेशन आई विल शेयर दी इवेंट चेक इन लिंक एंड दी क्यू आर कोड अगेन विद दी इवेंट आई डी इन दी क्यू एन ए सेक्शन शॉर्टली Thank you all again for joining us today. My name is Rashmita and I'm the event planner for Microsoft Reactor. This session will run over the next 60 minutes including Q&A. This session is being recorded and will be uploaded to our Reactor YouTube channel. I will share the link to our YouTube channel in the chat section soon. Today we are back with the last session on GitHub Actions for Azure series. In case if you have missed the previous session please visit our reactor youtube channel to watch all the recorded sessions i would now like to welcome vivek our speaker for today's session vivek is a tech enthusiast and an open source contributor with around 15 years of experience in the software industry he works at microsoft as as a senior cloud advocate but for now i will hand over to vivek to begin the session over to you vivek Hey thanks Rashmita just give me a minute when I share my screen let me know yes um uh, so there are no slides okay this the session is more of a demo oriented we'll go through all the things which we have been uh, we did discussed uh, in last three sessions as well um so i've been documenting everything what we have been discussing in one note so it's i mean i'm this is something which i found really nice uh, while doing sessions it's, it's easier to have a discussion with the community and uh, from a coverage perspective from last three sessions what we have done you know from recording from code uh, sample codes uh, tutorials and various other things which is required for you to upskill yourself is available um in my github repo or you can also visit this website so if you go to my github repo okay so there are a couple of things which uh we have done in past uh, you know three sessions uh one is to deploy um to azure web app service uh, using the github actions we built a github action uh, workflow and um, and and we used a couple of uh, concepts um really you know which is required for you to drive uh, the azure web app service uh, that is um, you know the dockerizing and also uh, making sure that uh, you provide the github uh, secrets and other things for uh, deploying the app and uh, the next session we focused on uh, kubernetes and serverless uh, all those code uh and and also workflows everything is available here and also reference documents and also the recording which is there from a hands on which we did uh this one i am not yet updated that we did it on wednesday the video was available only by yesterday so i could not find time to update it but i'll update it uh by in this weekend so that you can go back and uh, refer that as well it was more from uh machine learning and database uh, changes how you can push database changes and and also how you can uh, you know do the ml ops uh, end to end basically the training and deployment and everything uh, using uh, the github workflows so today we will focus on a uh, lot of things basically one is container scanning infrastructure as code uh cli how to use azure cli with github actions workflows and and powershell everything so uh it's like a miscellaneous session so you will will we'll make sure that you know we cover most of the things why you know you, you know before even i deep dive into this uh, we did when when we launched this series uh we did launch uh, a skilling challenge so if you go and go to my repo and click on the skilling challenge you know you will end up here uh where when you join this challenge it's it's still there it's still running it's 9 days to go and it will end on august 9th um i have hand picked eight modules in fact so uh if you see this you know eight modules with 
you know, seven hours of learning. And if you go to this uh, uh, and join this specific challenge, uh, you will be able to uh, access all these uh, learning modules. In fact, you can, um, it, it starts with GitHub introduction and other things, but it goes very deep uh, into uh, even to the Kubernetes service and how to do the deployments and everything with sandbox uh, available for you. So go back and try it out and see if these uh, actions work for you. Uh, that is one thing which I just wanted to call out that you you know you need to spend some time there. While you know I did couple of uh, you know uh, couple of sessions with respect to uh, using the core samples and other things very specific to certain use cases. Uh, you, I also have uh, come up with some of the use cases which you can build. So this is a hack. So you can do the hack on your own and also share it with us uh, so that you know we see that you know how you are using those uh, learnings and building these uh, set of uh, examples, right? So more hacks to come. I'll add more hacks here. Uh, it's very specific to these uh, two sessions, and uh, which is not there. So I'll be adding that over the weekend, and you can take a look at it. So this is the repo and you can go back and refer it. Uh, from today's discussion, uh, it's more of um, ARM templates. So where do we use uh, the uh, Azure Resource Manager templates is when you want to build an infrastructure as a code and you want to maintain the code base in the GitHub repo and you want to make changes to the infrastructure and you want to automate the building of infrastructure. And uh, when you do that automation, you also want to maintain the code at one place so that your DevOps engineers uh, can make uh, changes to the infrastructure and other things. And it is uh, maintained it as, as a code, infrastructure as a code, right? And this is a very uh, well-known DevOps practice. And, uh, and, and this is the uh, most important uh, part of the uh, automation as well, uh, that you don't want to keep your infrastructure running. Uh, specifically, if you are having a developer environment and other environments, uh, or you want to provide a developer environment to one of the developer to play around with uh, certain uh, tools uh, so that he can um, re reproduce some issues, right? So, um, so that is where we are going to use ARM templates uh, in Azure. Um, and specifically uh, from today's discussion, uh, I already have a GitHub repo. Um, I created a GitHub repo and I have a simple um, JSON, right? The, the JSON is nothing but the ARM template. So you can use this JSON and you can uh, create something. For every resource you create, you can actually download a template. So whenever you're creating a new resource, uh, in Azure, there is a template which gets created and you can download that template. You can create variables of that and you can pass variables to it and other things, right? So let me just open the JSON and show you what how it looks. So this is a ARM template uh, for creating a storage account. So it's a very simple ARM template. Uh, we are going to see from a storage account creation perspective. Uh, you go and create a storage account and uh, just log off you provide all the basic uh, informations which is required and you just log off right so there is nothing different uh, so basically i'm not focusing on arm templates today right so it's it's more of understanding that uh, if you want to read more about arm templates you can go to ms docs and understand it but this is what how it looks it's a simple json with all the information available for you to create a new resource okay um Coming back to the code, uh, for this we have we have a workflow, and what does that workflow does is a very simple workflow. So we know what is workflow is, and we have been discussing it from last three sessions. Um, so this is a simple workflow. Uh, whenever you push the changes, this gets deployed, and what it does is very simple. We have used the action checkout in almost all the uh, discussions we have had in all the templates we have built um, and also you know the login azure login is to create the login and you know how to use secrets you know you just go here go to settings and go add your secrets there in in the secrets uh, section of it and just provide the information we have seen that before i can also show it again if you're new to this um, let's go here and click on 
you know, just go to settings here and just go to secrets. And you can see this. There are a couple of secrets which I've created. So you just need to create new repository secret and provide whatever name you want to provide and give the details here. How to generate this is very simple as there is a command to generate it and it is available out there and we did did, did that in our previous sessions. You can go watch the video and figure that out. And uh, that is one of the thing. And let me come back uh, to the code uh, where the GitHub workflow is there uh, so that we can see what it does. So the code is um, so basically what we can do is uh, this is the login which we have already seen that before uh, here you know it's it's about creating arm template so this is this is the action which we are going to use so the action is very simple azure slash um, arm uh, you know uh, deploy so let us go and see what it provides to you github.com slash azure slash arm template you just go here and all actions all all the actions you're going to use is available on github so just go and go to that path uh, you will find the actions available for you and just come here there's actions not yml just click on that and this is what it provides right so there is input there is scopes there is subscription id various other uh, you know informations you can provide and then there is uh, which which file it executes so before it starts execution it executes this file so when what is that uh, you know this is index.js it's a node.js code what does that mean is there is something called as index.js here this is what it gets executed OK, so this is where the code is to run this specific action uh, with all the you know information you provide. It picks that information as an input and then goes and execute it in the index.js. OK, so let us go back. And uh, you know understand the action uh, more here in the code base. So we have used a couple of things, right? So one is uh, we have used a subscription ID. It's very simple. It's your subscription. ID. It's easy to get from the uh, Azure portal and then there is resource group. Uh, you have added resource group in your secret uh, secrets as well. Uh, it's it's pretty straightforward and then we are providing the part of the template, the template which we need to use and and a parameter which which we need to use. Uh, so this is one of the parameter which we need to set when we are running this kind of a arm template. So there is one um, Simple thing, this file is supposed to be there. And if you go into the actions um, of this particular, this has to be true. Okay, so this is true, right? So that means whenever it says true, you need to specify the path or URL, URL to the template. So this is very important. And then a uh, couple of uh, other things which are default as well. You can also see defaults and uh, required stuff. Uh, that's it. That's about uh, you know the ARM template. Uh, we just go back and try and see how it works. So we just need to go to uh, actions. We will go to actions uh, and we'll just run it. Before we run that, uh, just see, make it, you know, take a look at this. There is nothing here apart from one container registry. Uh, there is no other details here, right? So let's go back here and run the ARM template. Anything, you know, I'm just rerunning it. And when I just rerun this, it's it's running uh, the job, so it's basically checks out the Ubuntu. Uh, as I told you last time as well, that it first picks all the actions which is there, and it downloads and it sees whether it is all all available, and you can it can build it or not. It set it up, and then it runs your specific thing. It logs in, it creates the deployment, it validates and everything. And you can see these messages which is coming out there. So it is creating the deployment now 
so we can see how it gets executed. Right, so when it gets executed, um, you can see here. Uh, it gets updated here. It is still running, so we'll have to wait for some time. It will take some two minutes. So we have given a very uh, parameter as a very simple standard one. It did execute um, the you know the template. Um, so let's see. So we need to refresh some time to come up. So this is one. So this is how storage accounts get created. So it's a simple, you know, uh, simple way to create a resource within the Azure uh, through GitHub Actions. So this is mainly used when you want to, you know, when you have a strategy of uh, infrastructure as a service. So you build um, all the required uh, infrastructure information in the GitHub uh, workflow. And you can have many workflows for different different infrastructure requirement, and you can also use the need option uh, to make sure that it is it is connected with each other as well. That is, you are waiting for one to get completed and then uh, access that for the next one and then execute it, right? So that is something which you can drive from here. So this is where the um, you know uh, this works. Let me go back uh, to. The discussion. Um, so this this is about ARM template. It's very easy um, and easily doable. Uh, I'll come I'll come back to uh, sorry I'll come back to this policies uh, after we discuss the uh, container scanning uh, templates. Right. So let us come back here. So I just want to show you uh, container scanning. So container scanning is. It's a very simple thing. It's 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 like understanding uh, what happens when your containers when you build a container. What is the security? What are the uh, issues in the in your containers? So basically, this specific uh, container scanning uh, action involves two things. One is uh, Trivi and uh, Docker, uh, where you know it, it. This is for common issues, right? So what are those common issues? It could be uh, user base is not well or something is not ready. Um, you don't have the uh, permissions and all those things. And then there is Docker, which is making sure that you have built, you have used practices, best practices uh, to build a, you know, to build a container. And then you can have a special, um, you know, CSI benchmarking check as well, which is run quality check, which I, which is optional, but it's, it's a Boolean value. You can actually provide it in, in that uh, workflow kind of a thing. So we will see that as well. You know, I have the repo ready and the way I have designed this repo, we have used this code before. Uh, we did create an express app in while when we did the um, Azure app service uh, video and uh, you know the uh, session uh, by the way and it's available on the as a video as well in, in in YouTube channel and you can go there and you can actually figure out how to build this uh, code and how to build this docker file and create a docker image and upload it to uh, container Azure container instance how to do it at the video is available as I told you everything is available on my github repo if you go here and it's it's all everything is available from the reference documentation to code to recording so you can go back and refer it um, so the way we have built this now docker file is there there is code base is ready all we need to do now is uh, a build a github workflow to make sure that when we build this code uh, when we uh, build this code into an and uh, build the image with especially from building from a docker so we want to make sure we check some of the vulnerabilities so how do we do that so we'll go back here and go to my workflow so this is the workflow for this so it's very simple uh, if you we have done this check out we have done we have used login we have used this uh, how to get registry name how to get username and password and how do i add this into my uh, settings we have seen that now as well uh, all we need to do is build it 
so building also we have done before the most important discussion today we are having is this one which is container scanning actions right so when i go into the container scanning actions uh, there are a couple of things one you have obviously you have to give uh, the the image path the image which image you are using and if you want to make sure that you want to continue with some of the errors it's okay and you can provide severity threshold as well and you can run the quality check as well when i say run the quality check it is the benchmark things which which it runs right so let us see what's available here right so let's go here and get a dot com slash azure slash container scanning and you will see that actions dot yaml file um, this is the severity which we are using uh, by default it is high and for this one uh, i've just provided uh, you know very low severity as well which is critical only but you can make it high as well and to make sure it is checking everything and a uh, couple of things as well the um, this one run quality check uh, default it is true right and you can see you are you are only running for csi standards and checking the results uh, we have seen the outputs before we are not using it here but last session we saw how to use outputs and how to get access to all of these things right so there is image there is uh, you know there is uh, run quality checks and there is severity threshold i have provide the severity threshold and use it and how to you know how to drive that as well so let us go back and see this and we will run this yaml now right so this is their container scanned everything is available let's go back to this this is my scan i'm rebuilding it let's see what happens when i rebuild it right so this is very you know it's going to be um, let's open this it's still running i'm not able to open it why okay sorry now you can see it is doing those you know it checks out all the docker things and it builds my docker and docker login it does build the docker file the image is created successfully and then it is checking for a couple of things scanning so you can see this it is scanning the image so it you know it gives me some warnings in terms of what i don't have image name cvit threshold everything is just setting it up and it it has you know it has shown a couple of vulnerabilities it has shown that you know something is missing some templates engines and everything so it is basically to decode it and uh, you can see there is you know couple of uh, standards which has gone missing so it, it also gives me the standard id and also provides me that uh, what i have i don't know i've been using it as root and other things in the containers and other stuff so you can see this um, to see the complete uh, check the run right so if i click on this it will give me the report there is a link there it provides me the link and if i click on this the build actually fails because there is a lot of uh, issues in the image so it fails because it didn't pass all the checks uh, so that is the reason my build fails uh, so if you see here you know there is one critical there is one warning then there is three information right so you can see where the issues are what violations has happened and where the criticality is there so this is how you can you know you know build security into your image right so there is an image which is there and uh, you can verify this image and see what it is failing right so this is how you can do it let me go back to this and you know there are many other things which we have to uh, you know we are discussing today is one is the policy okay so policy is is nothing but 
uh, you have Azure and you want to make sure that there are all the policies of organizational policies are tested. All the you know you have you know you put through the policies um, and while doing the infrastructure as code and while you know running a couple of uh, things on the infrastructure, you want to make sure all the policies have been taken care. So for that you can you know you can go to the Azure dashboard and just open this as policy. You can see a couple of things uh, I'll not go into everything, but how you can actually use this in GitHub is is what uh, we're going to see. So go to the definitions here, which is there. Just click on definitions and you will see policy definition, uh, different initiative, different definitions and other things. And you just need to export the definition and you can get connected uh, to the GitHub repo, which is there. And I'm just signing into my GitHub repo and actually provide information to the GitHub repo which we are used. That is ARM template, branch, whatever you call it, skip files, whatever. And you come here, add policy definitions. There is already a bunch of policy definitions which is available. So you can, it's up to you to choose the right set of policy definitions. So choose anything which is specific. So, you know, uh, I've chosen a couple of things in my GitHub repo, but you can choose any of these things. Okay. So, and based on your requirement, okay. So that is again, you can only choose two, okay, two set. So I'm I'm just picking it random, OK, but that is not the usual case. Uh, I can review it and then just go and export it. OK, so when I do the export, it will get created on my uh, repo of uh, deploy arm template. So which is what is here. The policies, which is what it gets created here. So these are the two policies I picked randomly. Um, you know, from a, from the already existing policy, and then I created one small policies just to play around, and this is a policy which is there. So all we need to do is to just run this action and execute it. So the action is very simple. Again, uh, you just have to come here and see what action you want to you know use, and this is the manage Azure policies. Uh, basically, this you are using it when you're building something and you're running it and deploying it, right? So um, if you go to the Azure github.com slash Azure policies, oh, miss, yeah. OK, so if I go here. Um, again, bunch of things are available here. So mo most important thing about, uh, you know, the workflow building is understanding all these uh, different inputs and output and runs and descriptions which is required, which are the required and which are true and which are false and other stuff. So uh, once you understand this, it's pretty easy to execute. So it's if all we are doing is giving part to the policy and we are just running it and that is that is the only thing which we are changing here so if i go back to this uh, code and just go into my workflow there is one more workflow which is there this is interesting we, we never used this uh, specific thing in uh, in previous discussions uh, is that workflow dispatch so when when i say workflow dispatch this will not run on push on anything it is manually triggered okay so unless and until i go and trigger by an event it never gets triggered okay this is one thing which is new and we didn't use it before and rest of the things we have used it and only thing is we are providing the policy details here the path to the policy it's a json file it's a simple json file gets created in your repo when you do that through github um, if you don't want to do that through github you are creating a json file and uploading it there is a lot of samples available out there um, you know there is a repo where all the samples available when you go and search for it uh, you can definitely make a copy of that uh, json and uh, upload it here and use the policy here so all you are doing here is governance so 
we did security, we did governance, we did ARM template it is, uh, infrastructure as a code, and we building it and running it. So all these are part of uh, your execution. It, uh, basically, it's, it's, it's basically to build uh, a secure way of executing your infrastructure as a code, in your deployments, your CI CD cycles, and other things. So this is that's what we are discussing today. So all and I'll just go back to the actions to now and you can see there is one more action here and that is what gets created by automatically and if you see this it already tells me that it's a workflow dispatch uh, it's an event trigger event trigger so it's pretty simple so run event trigger on the main branch you just need to mention the reason it's okay um, why you are triggering it and when you trigger it it triggers so uh, wait for the trigger to get started. Yes, it gets started and you can actually see this policy running. So it's a very simple one. It runs the policy and it, it verifies whether the policy is there or not. Some some messages it throws. Uh, I have not really you know done any um, specific. I have not picked any specific policies and other things. So I have just randomly testing it out. Uh, but you can actually go back here and you know, if uh, if you understand all these policies and from an execution perspective, just pick that and work from the assessment and other things and make sure that you assess your policies. So that is one of the thing which I just wanted to discuss. Uh, so we did templates, we did scanning, we did um, how to execute the policies and other things from a governance perspective. But there are a couple of other things which you can do. Uh, the other thing is uh, PowerShells. You can run PowerShell uh, with the GitHub um, GitHub workflows. You can build workflow specifically for uh, PowerShell, and this is the simple uh, command uh, to do that. So again, just copy this. Go to your GitHub.com and slash Azure PowerShell, and you will go to the Git actions and you will find actions.yml go to your actions.yml and here is where you find all the things so inline script again that is what we use for azure powershell and then there is a couple of things which is required you, you provide that information and you execute it so that is simple thing i'm not done i mean i'm not doing creating github repos and showing you all this stuff you can go back and try it out um, you know, it's very simple. We have used the rest of the other things which is that uh, only thing which is new in this code is uh, PowerShell and then the inline script and the version. So these two were true, right? These two were the options which which were true enough uh, where we need to make sure that we need to provide true, right? So uh, otherwise, if it is false, you know, you will not be able to uh, uh, set it up. Otherwise, you'll you'll have to go back and create and uh, create the information here. Otherwise, you can just directly use this. Okay. Um, let me go back and show you the CLI as well, uh, because you can run CLI as well. So, uh, from an Azure perspective, you can create an action from uh, executing the CLI version. You know, CLI. You can pick the CLI version. Uh, which CI version you want to use, and uh, you can provide the inline script. So inline script is very simple: is you can give as many uh, as many commands as possible here, and run it, and similar to the one which I provided here. So nothing changes here. Only thing is uh, the version. We will see that as well. Uh, let me copy this Azure slash CLI. Let me go to the actions.yml and we'll see this is again inline script. So there is version, I know it's not necessary. Uh, you can actually provide the version. Um, uh, it always by default it picks the latest. So that's the whole thing, right? So otherwise you can provide which version you want to use. And then there is script uh, you can provide. This is very, uh, you know, uh, simple to use. It's just that how you use it in your um, workflow is where it matters. And uh, simple way, 
we can execute this one in a, just create a github repo uh, create a credentials and then add all this stuff and just execute it and you will be able to understand how this works and then use these things uh, to build your infrastructure as a code you use this after building uh, to access the vms or to access your services uh, whatever steps you want to run run them and run the scans run the policies uh, everything you know when you're building the uh, ci cd strategy right so that is that is the main reason why uh, i'm covering all of these uh, yaml so that you can go back and uh, play around and uh, build all this stuff so uh, coming back to this so we have we have pretty much completed uh, the you know from azure web app um, let me go back here uh, pretty much completed uh, how to do it for azure web app service um, how to use uh, and build workflows for kubernetes and serverless and from uh, database and uh, machine learning deployments as well and we have seen container scanning and how to work with um, CLI, how to do it with infrastructure as a code and other things. Um, the other uh, thing which I just wanted to call out for you was the deploy, deploy to Azure. Uh, this is a kind of a, you know, uh, extension which is available uh, where you can just install this. And this is specifically building CI/CD pipeline. Uh, if you, you can see that the most important thing here is uh, getting your uh, CS, you know, personal token uh, specifically for workflow. If you don't have this specific token, uh, you will not be able to push code to workflow through the other um, other clients of uh, GitHub, right? So, say for example, if you're using CI, uh, CLI, or uh, you are using the uh, Visual Studio extension. If you are using personal token and in that personal token, if you are not enabled workflow, uh, you will not be able to design that uh, way. And we did test it that last time as well when we did the first session. Uh, there was uh, one question from someone that how to secure this. This is how you have to secure. Uh, if a person has a personal token to do a couple of activities on the workflows, then only he'll be able to run the workflows. Otherwise, if he doesn't have the security on that, if he doesn't have the personal token enabled with workflow, then he will not be able to execute anything. So that's that's one of the way to you know drive it. So um, I just want to call out this again. Uh, you can go back and learn all of these things. Uh, you know, it starts from introduction to GitHub and you can go back to drive this uh, cloud scaling challenge, which I showed you in the starting. Uh, it was the uh, these challenges which I mentioned. Uh, if you come here and join the challenge and this is this is all it has around seven hours or I don't know, eight hours of uh, modules which is there. So you can just go back here and run through these um, uh, these uh, modules and you can definitely, uh, you know, uh, you know, get an expert, you know, expert level there, you know, because it it does give you a sandbox. It does give you, uh, you know, the steps and code and everything there. So do take a look at it and uh, drive it. Uh, if you have any questions, please ask me now. And I just want to spend some time. I wanted to keep some time uh, for questions because uh, we have done this series like you know th three sessions have been completed this is the fourth session and the last session as well uh, from a github actions perspective so i just wanted to make sure that i spend some last 10 minutes or 15 minutes in questions if at all you have any questions anyone has any questions or is there in my we have, we have questions. questions. Okay, that's there in. Okay. Yes, it's an artifact. Oh, okay, there are so many questions here. Sorry. Where it starts? Okay, it'll come here first. Yes, it's container scanning reports are an artifact. Uh, by the way, in uh, workflow in uh, um, in in GitHub, when when you do these actions, right? Uh, the workflow where you can also create artifacts and store those artifacts. 
that is that is one of the things and it's it's also a runner uh, you know we, we did discuss about runner runner is nothing but an infrastructure uh, if you see the code right if you see the code here it always says you know, all, you know ubuntu or windows or mac you can provide those any information here so it you know it's basically to run anything it, it requires an infrastructure so it creates an infrastructure and it it can also store these uh, uh, artifacts and it's it's charged as well so you know for certain gb i think it is free after that it is uh, definitely uh, you know it's it's charged as we don't have control over the containers used how do you resolve those vulnerabilities unless we use our own images so the, those are the things so um, so uh, if you are using in a base container then again the base container has to be um, the right base container uh, i mean that is that is the reason why uh, most of the people um, use the versions which are uh, you know which are already we have the csi benchmark done testing has been done and other things uh, you have to make sure your base version of um, while building the image your base version is right and then rest of the rest of the things you do it on top of that you have the control on the, on the system so that is one thing which you have to do and uh, uh, and if you are downloading other um, other um, images uh, as well uh, those has to be uh, tested for vulnerabilities if it is having found vulnerabilities then um, it has to be reported it has to be fixed and that is the uh, that is the standard way of doing it um, and all uh, open source in uh, you know, open source systems have started using these scanners uh, to make sure that when these uh, you know when they build it uh, they run these scanners and make sure that they are, they are in sync with uh, with the standards which is there so those repos generated are artifacts yes how do you run the policies especially when you have uh, prs sorry i didn't get this question uh, can you just elaborate on this devops is it devops yeah can you elaborate on this question or if anyone else has question you can also type while it is there is policy executed on each build no so if you see this scanner um uh let me go back again to on okay not this one the way this was built was an event trigger uh, i did when we check this as well so when i go to this policy it clearly shares you know says that we will trigger it so unless and until i trigger it and i this is where i can trigger it and I have to provide why I'm triggering it and other things. So it's basically a workflow dispatch. So it means it's 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 not uh, if it make changes to the code or if you make push something in the code and this particular policy check you know goes on. No, it's not. This is uh, this is part of your uh, verification. So it's not like every day you do this. Uh, you are verifying the policies for. Uh, uh, from a governance perspective, right? From so user base, cost management, uh, various other things which is there from a policy there. Uh, like for example, you have 15 developers and for 15 developers, you want to provide them a couple of accesses and give them a um, couple of uh, money in their bucket so that they can only spend this much uh, per, you know, per month or something. Uh, so if you build such a policy and you want to make sure that policy is verified um, and executed properly and there is no issues found, um, that is where you, you can run these policy uh, executions. All right, so. Any thanks, thanks Eva. Yeah, I mean, I'll uh, definitely share 
uh, I mean, if you go to my GitHub repo, you can find all the links um, from the recordings and other things. All the recordings will be available. Hacks are there. There is cloud killing challenge link. Please make sure that you know you'll go through it and you you almost know everything about uh, you know uh, workflow building uh, once you go through all these things. You know, it's it's very simple. So that's a that's a good ask. Uh, there is a question uh, that can we see all the cloud scale challenge which is running uh, because the cloud scale challenge runs in different different places and from different different people. Uh, for reactor perspective, we will be sharing it here. Um, and uh, there is obviously Azure Developer League and other activities which is which is which are happening, and you can definitely go back there and learn different. Uh, you know challenges there uh, you can uh, take a look at that but for reactor uh, whenever we are doing a couple of series we'll definitely go and uh, you know uh, share that link here so that you can go back and drive those things um, while i am here by the way so let me so it's basically a boot camp as well uh, we are we'll come back with uh, dates and everything uh, from a ML series. Uh, here I will definitely cover almost everything end to end uh, from a concepts perspective to different models and recommenders and how to build web app for training models and real world applications, building those things. Uh, we will do complete hands on and uh, that's that's the idea. I'm building the uh, building the calendar. So do follow or do watch the uh, GitHub repo again because I'll put post the calendar out there. So it's on my it's on the YouTube. Uh, let me share the link. Uh, let me share the link here. Sorry. You can find all the videos here. So this is my GitHub repo. So it's it's there with code base. Everything is there for you. All the example workflows are there. Any other questions? Girish, Kiran, Kiran, do you have any questions? Because you were using GitHub Actions, right? I mean, workflows before. Oh, very Thank good session, uh, Vivek. Uh, thanks for taking the time out for us. No worries, sir. And any questions or I mean you please take the you know survey and also uh, check in uh, even check in so that you know you can um, get access to all the content um, and also the future um, sessions which are going to happen. Uh, just make sure that you, you do the check ins and also to take the survey as well uh, because it's very um, you know important for us to understand uh, what you're thinking and how it was for you and what are the things you know what are the other sessions you might require please do post it here as well if you are interested in couple of sessions and couple of you know other things which you want to have a discussion with the community just share the details here and we can definitely uh, get those sessions up and running for you. Any other questions we have? I think that's about it then. Thank you Vivek so much for the session and thank you all for joining us today. Uh, please feel free to scan the QR code which is displayed on the screen and do the event check-in. This will, you know, help us uh, for the feedback for future. And also, please visit our Microsoft Reactor Bengaluru Meetup page. Thank you all.